If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, August 30th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. The American Swim Coaches Association's World Clinic is just a few days away. Hundreds of coaches from around the globe will gather in New Orleans to learn from their peers and gain insight from the best coaches in the sport. Last year in Las Vegas was an exciting event with Olympic coaches from many countries offering up their wisdom. One of those coaches was Greg Troy, who was the head men's coach for the United States at the London Olympics. He gave an hour-long talk about his perspectives on coaching swimmers and learning from other coaches. We're happy to bring you just one part of that talk in which he relived his work at the Olympics, described the demands on swimming coaches, and gave some crucial advice on taking time off. For the last 40 years or so, has had three jobs. He has been the head coach of the Fort Myers Swim Club in Florida. For 20 years, he was the head coach at the Bowles School in Jacksonville, Florida. And for the last 15 years or so, he's been at the University of Florida, where he is now the head coach for men and women's swimming. At Bowles and at Florida, his teams rose to national prominence and have won national championships. And at the same time, his swimmers became among the best in the world. In 1988, Anthony Nesty won the gold medal in the 100-meter butterfly. And in this summer, if you remember the beginning of the Olympics, Olympic trials, Elizabeth Beisel, Connor Dwyer, Peter Van de Kay, Ryan Lochte, all coached by Coach Troy, started out the Olympic trials and set a tone for fast swimming that carried all the way through to the Olympic Games themselves. This is a coach that I consider to be a friend, but I think more importantly, you should consider to be a friend. Peter Van de Kay was representing the Oakland Live Wires. Ryan Lochte was representing the Daytona Beach Y. Elizabeth Beisel was representing the Bluefish from Massachusetts. He remembers where he came from. He remembers where his swimmers came from. For all of his years of club coaching, 24 or so, he served on his local swim committee, trying to help make swimming better, going to the U.S. swimming conventions, serving in politics and growing and improving the sport. He currently serves on the American Swimming Coaches Association Board of Directors, finding time to help the sport be better for all of us. This summer, I watched much of the Olympics, as I'm sure you did too, and I almost never heard his name. He was in the background with his hard work, his intelligence, and his intensity, helping us have the greatest men's Olympic performance since 1976. 66% of our swims were faster than they've ever been before. And it may be that television doesn't recognize one of the people that helped make that happen, but we come here every year at the American Swimming Coaches Association Clinic where we can look each other in the eye as colleagues and coaches and friends and acknowledge who has done great deeds for all of us, for our country, to help get more kids on our teams, more kids signing up and trying out. And a very significant part of that is his work with the Olympic team. I hope you will help me welcome him and let us know how much we appreciate the job he's done for all of us. We may never get that chance again as we get it this time after the Olympic Games. Coach Greg Troy, the 2012 United States of America head men's Olympic coach. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks a lot. You're way too kind there. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. You're, you're way too kind. I'm, I'm always humbled in, in this dynamic. Uh, 
speaking is not one of my, my better traits, but um, um, it, it's, it's, um, it's a great time, and I'm, I'm glad I can be here and hopefully I share some things. I, um, this is a little more reflective. Uh, you guys had a chance to talk to Eddie, and no one knows more about talking about technique and stroke. And, and you listened to Bill Sweetenham last night, who quite frankly stole most of my talk. So I, I'm, uh, I, I woke up this morning, and I, I don't have a topic. Uh, there's one out there, getting better as you get older, and the only person who can tell you that is my wife. And she's in here, you have to ask her about that. And it really didn't mean to me. It was, it was help older athletes get, get better. Uh, I, I thought about that uh, as a topic. I started on it, and this is not ask his fault in any manner. I, I started, and then I saw that I, I'd sent him two topics, and I saw I was going to talk on uh, well, things that work and some things that don't. And um, I didn't, uh, I had a little bit written on that. This last year has been a little time consuming. I have no excuse, never accept them for my athletes. Uh, I certain, certainly am not making any myself. But um, it, it takes time to do those things. My, my favorite, so I had a little bit in both of those talks. My, my favorite talk is, would be to just have questions. I, I think so many times when I came to clinics when I was younger, I always, um, felt that you, you get to a point in the conversation where you really wanted an explanation of what was going on. Um, la yesterday I had lunch with Bill Sweeten and Martin Wilby, assistant and I, and, and a great coach, and we had a chance to eat lunch with Bill. And we thought Bill was taking a lot of time with us with lunch, being a nice guy. He was rehearsing his speech on it. But, but we had two hours, and we had a chance to ask questions, and he gave us all kinds of great information. The, the depth of understanding of the sport that he showed last night, if you ever get a chance to talk to the guy, uh, you know, he talked about traveling the world for roller coasters and talking to 10 people. It was amazing the information he has. And he said, people that are really good at the things that they do, he said, don't be afraid to ask them because if you ask them, they'd love to share it with you. You get a chance to corner Bill Sweetenham and ask him questions, it, it'll be worth your time. So I, I had three topics to talk. And then I talk, called John Leonard a few, a few days ago, actually about a week ago, and said, John, I'm struggling a little bit with this. I'm not really sure what I'm going to talk about for an hour. And he said, well, they always want to hear about the Olympics. Make sure you tell them about that. So that was the fourth topic. And, uh, and then the, I'm back to that. Uh, so I, I had four or five topics. And I didn't, have a, didn't know until this morning that I even had a title. And I woke up this morning. I came up with a title this morning. And, and I realized that uh, reflecting on all this stuff, uh, I think the swimming community lost a really um, a great friend this past year, uh, Ron Bellatore. Known Ron for years. Those of you new sticks. If you're one of the young coaches that didn't know him, you missed a real experience. And if, um, if you're one of the older ones that did, you need to share some of the ballatory stories with the younger ones because they're, 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 they're priceless. And I thought about, you know, maybe taking a few moments and a little bit of time for sticks this morning, but those of you who know him would say, Troy, none of that BS for me, and there probably would have been an expletive in front of the BS. So, um, so I'm not going to do that, but, but keep sticks in your, in your thoughts. So basically, this is a little hodgepodge of all kinds of things. And I hope I can get through most of it enough that I can do the thing I would prefer to do at the end, which is answer some questions. Um, the, the, the fifth topic is the one I'm going to start about. The fifth one, coaching as a profession, uh, takes an awful lot of time, folks. And that's my topic today is time because I think it, it relates to everything. Um, it is very time consuming. If you're a young coach and you're just starting doing it and you think this is a profession where as you go longer, you're going to do less and you're going to have more free time, it's the worst. The more you do it, the more it becomes like a sponge. It takes up your time. It takes up your energies in a very good way. Um, it's a fantastic way to share with people. You work with the very best and brightest young people in the United States. And I don't care if you're working with 8-year-olds or you're working with the 27-year-olds that I had the good fortune to work with this past year. They're sharp people. They're our future of our country. It's the biggest job you do. It's way more important than the time they go. It's way more important than how fast they swim at the Olympics. And, and I think as long as you remember that, then this whole thing becomes very purposeful. Because when the swimming's over, um, um, one of the things that happened at the Olympics this summer, I think one reason why the team was especially good was because we kept it in perspective. I think the athletes really enjoyed the experience. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But, um, but anyway, uh, I was talking to John Urbanchek, Terry McKeever, and Bob Bowman, all periodically through the Olympic trials and over the course of the last six months. And, and all the conversations were relative to how much time it took, how long the trips are, uh, the impacts it has in your life. And, and in talking about it, even Bill Sweeten last night, 
first information he gave is how much time it takes to finish to take care of your family and things. And, and reflecting that, especially talking with John Urbanchek, he said, you need to tell people this. And, and we were talking, this is um, the, the amount of time taken. Um, Bob Bowman, greatest, one of the greatest coaches we have, worked with the best athletes ever. Bob is articulate, really knows what's going on. Another guy, if you want to ask questions, good guy to ask. Bob's taken a year off from the sport, and his comment to me was, he said, I just want to have a time where I don't have to be someplace. Because if you're going to do it right, there's places you have to be. There's demands. Your athletes are going to require time. It comes at inconvenient times for you and your family. But here we've got a great guy that we really need in coaching, relatively young. And, and, and Bob is going to take a year away from the sport, and he's kind of... I think he'll be back, but he's, he's been questioned a little bit for that very reason. Uh, it was really interesting talking to Terry McKeever. Fantastic. Cannot tell you how great it was to work with Terry this summer. She understands the sport, really good technically, knows how to motivate athletes, especially good at presenting things to women, and we equally as good as men if she had more of an opportunity to do it. She, she's fantastic. But she was talking about how it took her a long time to find a husband, and basically, she was from a big family, so she already had, she's from a family of 10, and she was the oldest of 10, so she kind of was the mother sometimes. So, you know, she didn't raise a family of her own, and one of the reasons is she said it took so much time to do really, really well at what she's doing. And then the one that really piqued my interest was John Urbanchek. John Urbanchek, one of the best ever. Special thanks to you, John, if you're in here. If you aren't, um, you guys need to thank him today. He did the toughest job in the Olympic team. He took the distance freestylers from day one and kept them the whole way through till the last day of the meet. Everyone else is resting, playing games and stuff. And I specifically wanted John on the team because his way of doing it was one that those athletes stayed relaxed. He's respected by the athletes. But his attention to detail and staying on top of it the whole time was amazing. But John and I were talking. I was talking to him that swimming took a lot of time, that I was reflecting a little bit on what I would do different if I was going to go back and, and coach again. And uh, one of the things I would do different, and I offer this to you younger coaches, I offer it to my assistants that have families, and, and maybe even some of us that are a little bit older that are still doing it. Um, if I had a chance to do it over again, I would once a month take at least a three-day weekend because it, the job is so consuming and takes so much time. It's not 9 to 5. It's not 20 hours a week, 40 hours a week. The other coaches at Florida, really class coaches, big-time sports, the best at what they do. They're always amazed. When is your off-season? There is no off-season in swimming if you're going to be really great at the highest levels. And if you're working with age groupers and younger kids, you may not put quite as much time on the deck of the pool, but you know what it's like dealing with parents, and you have to deal with them. They're concerned, interested people. Um, you have to deal with parents. You have to deal with boards. You have to learn a lot about the logistics of what's going on. So it's very time-consuming no matter what level you're at. So I would take a three-day weekend, and when I took the three-day weekend off, I would tell my athletes, either on Thursday night or Friday morning, hey, folks, I'm leaving you with the assistants. I'm leaving you with the other. Actually, they aren't assistants. They're other coaches. I'm going to leave you with the other coaches. They've got the plan. They know what they're doing. I'm taking time with my own family. And I'm going to, in fact, be back on Monday, and I'll be a better coach because of it. I've said many times that um, sometimes I feel that I spent more time raising other people's children than my own. Got three fantastic boys, great wife. Um, but I think sometimes we miss that. So if you came away from nothing else, I would recommend very much what Bill Sweeten said last night. Take care of your family first. Now you cannot do that and be a great swim coach. And great swim coaches come whether you're working with eight and unders, whether you're working with 27-year-olds. It's just a different level of recognition. You can't do that unless you're taking a lot of time. It takes a lot. You take that weekend off, though, you're, you get very much, in, oh, I'm leaving my athletes short. You are not. Only good things happen if you'll take that weekend off. First of all, the coaches you work with that are under you, they are going to be better because you've shown your athletes that you respect them. That's going to help you do your job. It's going to help your athletes be better. Second, it's going to help your athletes because it makes them dependent, and it's going to make them develop a value system, which is very, very important. You heard it last night. Bill Sweetenham talked about character. You want your athletes to have character. Your whole team will be better. Your athletes will be better. They'll make you a better coach because of it. Um, your family will be better, and they're the people you're supposed to take care of, number one. And on top of that, you will be better because you'll be a better coach on Monday because you'll have taken care of all your responsibilities. You will come in fresh. You'll be ready to go. And your athletes will know that. 
So if you're a young coach and before you get in that mode where it's all work, 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 it's still work. It's really important. Spend the extra time. Bill Sweetnam always says compromise won't get it for you. This isn't compromise. It will make you a better coach. You will have a great family and uh, your athletes will have better value. To watch parts two and three of Greg Troy's talk, just go to our Ask a 2012 landing page on SwimmingWorld.tv. And we can't wait to hear what wisdom will be imparted this year at the Ask a World Clinic, and we look forward to seeing you there. The Morning Swim Show will be back with a new episode on Tuesday, so to those of you in the United States, enjoy the Labor Day holiday weekend. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.